they're different religions that think that Jesus was just a good man just a good man that came along are y'all with me and they, they, they think he was just a good man just another man and matter of fact they don't believe in the resurrection of the man they just believe he was another man that came alone but I come to tell you today I believe all of it I believe all of him I believe that Jesus come on here somebody was the only begotten son of God I believe that he lived come on I believe that he suffered I believe that he shed his blood yeah I wish I had some help in here I believe that that blood is so strong that it reaches to the highest mountain and flows through the lowest valley I believe it I believe it I believe it I believe that he gave his life I believe that he was buried went in a tomb y'all ain't helping me and three days later got up again with all power in his head I believe it I just need to know are there some other folk in here that believe it that believe do I have any believers in here somebody might say why do you believe it like that I believe it like that because not only did I hear it not only did I read it but I experienced it nothing like somebody that's experienced this thing I heard he was a healer but then he healed me I heard he was a way maker, but then he made a way for me. I heard he would bring you out, but then he brought me. Y'all ain't helping me. I heard he would supply all of our needs, and then he supplied my needs. I'm a believer.
glorify the name of the Lord in this place. Sweet Spirit. Holy Spirit. Healing Spirit. Delivery Spirit. Take over this place. Come on, let's magnify him in this place. From the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless him. Day and on behalf of that, our word in motion is coming with a special presentation. Say, God bless you. Word in motion.
Jesus. I need you to walk. 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 Walk with me. I need you. I need you. I need you. Anybody in here need the Lord to walk with you? I need you to walk, walk with me, Jesus. Walk with me, Jesus. Walk with me, Jesus. Walk with me, Jesus. Hold my hand. Hey, yeah. Hold my hand. Hey, yeah. I need you to walk. I need you to walk.
That song talking about just touch your mind and tell him I need him to walk with me. Come on, I need him, I need, I need him, I need him, I need him, I need him, I need him. Say, walk with me, Lord, walk with me, Lord, walk with me. I need you to walk. Ooh, he's my strength, he's my strength, he's my strength.
everybody, just put those holy hands together. Come on, everybody, put those hands. This is for Jesus Christ. Come now, our mighty king. Help us thy name to sing. The praise. We've come to pray. We've come to pray. We've come to pray.
glorified. We praise your holy name. And we magnify you for all that you are, for all that you've done, for all that you're doing. We lift you up. We praise your name. And we give you all honor, glory, and praise. Thy kingdom come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thy will be done. Yes, Lord. Thy kingdom come. Yes. Thy will be done. Yes, in our lives, in this place, in this nation, and in this world. Bless us in your word. Help us in your word. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Save, my God, my God, my God. heal, and deliver this day. Do it in Jesus' name. Do it in Jesus' name. Do it in Jesus' name. And we'll praise you now. We'll praise you forever. Amen. And amen. Come on and give him praise, everybody. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. While you're standing, I want you to help me welcome those that have joined us. We are so grateful and thankful for many could not make it into this auditorium. But thank God for the ability to connect electronically. And we are able to broadcast this service live, literally, around this nation and around the world. So we welcome all of you, wherever you are. That's the marvelous thing about the God we serve not only is he here with us, but he's right there with you. So come on and worship with us, praise with us, magnify the name of the Lord with us. And the same God that's blessing us here, as we take this word of God to the world, will bless you right there. Welcome to the word. Give God praise, everybody. Amen. Give him praise. Would you give this choir a hand? Give him a hand. We thank you. Y'all can do better than that. Come on. Give the made it back choir members a hand. They made it back. <laughs> hey, back. You may be seated. You may be seated. And I do solicit your prayers. ask you to pray with me for a few moments. If you pray with me, I, I don't believe I'll be long. But we want to declare word. Amen. Amen. For it is in the Lord that we live, we move, we have yes. our being. Amen. We have been talking for the last several weeks and we continue our study. We've entitled this lesson that we are studying generational merge, generational merge. Our foundational passage has come from the first chapter of Joshua. Amen? Uh, I'll read today just one verse from there right now, and that would be Joshua 1 and 7, which says, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Amen. Generational merge. As God was, he always will be. And God shall not fail. Anybody believe that? As God was, he always will be, and he shall not fail. 
If you believe that about the Lord, would you give him a praise in this place? We live in a day where people are pretty bold with their stance, with their stance, with what they believe in, with what they're connected to. And uh, sometimes I think about individuals, you know, this is Founders Day, and I can't help but think about all the years that the Lord has blessed us to be in the house, especially those that have been in the house for some number of years. Every now and then, some folk fall out the house. Let's cross the world. And when I say the house, I mean the house of the Lord. Some folk may grow up or be raised learning about Jesus or praising God. And then there comes a time and uh, allegedly a reason people fall away. And oftentimes people are very, very bold with their falling away. They fell away for this reason or they fell away for that reason. And I'm, I'm not here to um, smash anybody today. If I, if I could do anything, I want to encourage somebody to take a look again. <laughs> Take a look again. Take a take a look again at the, at the God that your parents taught you how to pray to. It, take a look again uh, at, at the God. Some of us grew up with mothers that said, uh, uh, "God's gonna provide. God, God will do it." Come on here, somebody. And I understand. I, I really do appreciate the Lord allowing me to grow up, spend so much time and so many years in church because uh, I believe that I was able to see a lot, see the span. I was able to see from a youngster, I was able to see myself going from being a very young person to being a grown person and wanting to kind of see some things and experience some things and do some things on my own. And you all know I, I try to be transparent. I do not ever try to convey that I got in church and just stayed right there. That's wonderful. I praise God for everybody's testimony that can say they grew up in church and they got in there and stayed right there. That didn't happen to be me. Amen? Because as I got older, I wanted to see what else was happening. I wanted to check out some other sides of the situations. Are you hearing me? Now, as for me, I wasn't bold with, you know, trying to do other stuff. I tried to sneak with it. You know, I, I, the, the last thing you want to do is be out doing something and have some church folk see you doing what you're not supposed to be doing. See, y'all, y'all, yeah, y'all too deep. And y'all know my story. I stayed around for a while, and I figured I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to leave town. I get out of town. That way I can go do what I want to do. <laughs> Forgot God's every place. <laughs> that didn't work. Amen. Found myself right back. But I say that to let people know uh, and to give a call. I'm thankful today that God didn't allow my life to be snatched away while I was playing. Well, there was a time, there was a time I was just playing and, 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 and I wasn't doing all the good stuff. You know, I, I could have been, I could have been, met, I, I, see, some folks just sing a song called it sound good. But when I sing that song, it could have been me. Outdoors, no food, no clothes. Alone without a friend. Another number with a tragic end. I mean that. But God did not see fit to let that thing be. I stand here today and I want you to know that it's by God's grace and his power that he keeps on keeping me. And I'm here to say thank you, Lord, for all you did for me. And I hope I can reach somebody else because there's some other folk that's just 
hang it out. And if I could just shake you up and get you to remember how good God's been to you. Not your mama, not your father, not your sister, not your brother. But think about God's goodness to you. And it's got to be about personal relationship with him. Until there's personal relationship with God, you're going to have a weakness within you. Are you hearing me? It won't take much to knock you over. It's got to be per I'm here because of my relationship with him. I'm here because of who I know he is. He's my keeper. He's my healer. He's my provider. Come on. He's my peace. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. You come too late to change my mind. It's about he and I. I don't need another individual to convince me of how great God is. Are you hearing me? So when I get in that word of God, when I get in that word of God and see the demonstration and the manifestation of who he is, I have no problem following him. Amen. And I am not sad about it. I'm not ashamed of him. Come on. When you see me, I'm going to be the same person. I, I, I checked that, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm honored. I'm honored. Um, last night was the occasion of the men of honor. And this was the 13th year that five men every year have been drafted or inducted into, into this men of honor. And I mean, it is just uh, uh, the name who's who's on there. And I, I, I was just, I'm honored that I was placed in there, or inducted in there 10 years ago. 10 years ago. And outstanding men in, uh, inducted in there. But one thing is I've read all the names. Honorable names. Wonderful, major careers. You name the careers. Now, there's a few other preachers, but I was the first preacher inducted, and I'm the only bishop to this day. Now, why do I say that? Because some folk don't understand that we can take this God we serve, understand him, be in relationship with him, and be the top whoever, wherever we go, because it's about God's glory, it's not even about us. When people see us coming, they should be reminded, wow, God is real. God is in the blessing business. Is there anybody that know he is real and he is in the blessing business today? Every now and then you ought to look back over your life. Look, look back over your life and, and, and find a few things that you know nobody could have done but God. Uh, uh, help me in here. Find you a few things you know no one could have done in your life but God. Find you a few times that it was God that raised you up. Find you a few times that it couldn't have been no one but God that opened that door, that gave you that position. Nobody but God that gave you that job or gave you that career or gave you that home or gave you that car. Nobody but God that did it. But then there's some people that act like it wasn't even him, it was me. It was me. It was my intelligence. It was my ability. It was my friend. Let me help you out. No, it wasn't. It was God. Are you hearing me? It was God. Somebody say, it was God. Now, why would God bless us like this? Why would God bless us 
in such a way? Why would God promise us a few things? Why would God do some things? We were studying this past Wednesday night. We have some fabulous study the word of God on Wednesday nights. We were studying this past Wednesday night, and we were over there in Genesis 12. And we were looking at the word of God in Genesis 12 because it's there that God promised Abram some things. Are you with me? It's there that God promised Abram some things. God told Abram in Genesis 12 and 1, he said, get out of the country. Get away from your kindred. Get from your father's house. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. And you're going to be a blessing. I'm even going to bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. And the word of God said that Abram got his wife, got his nephew Lot, and they left the place. And we studied that entire chapter, and I'm not going to try to get into the verses this morning. You can read it in your leisure. But as Abram heard the promise of God, Abram got to a place and he was about to enter Egypt. And Abram paused and he told his wife Sarah, Abram said, now listen, when we get ready to go down here, when we get ready to go down here, I need you to do me a favor. Don't tell them you're my wife. Tell them you're my sister. Because if you tell them you're my wife, they'll kill me and keep you. Are y'all still here? Now, God had just told Abram what to do. God had just told Abram what to do. And, and I believe that if we're following the mandate of God, we ought to understand God's got us covered. Not only did we read the promise given to Abram, but we read the manifestation of the promise that Abram received it. But between the time God spoke and the time that the promise got delivered, Abram asked his wife to join him in a lie. And one of our dear mothers the other night said, what did Abram still get blessed? How is it that Abram told a lie, told his wife to work with him in the lie? Are y'all with me? But God still delivered the promise. Now, somebody really need to get on this. Somebody really need to capture this word. This is, a, this is an important answer. Because if, if many of us would be honest in here, we know that God has put us on a track, gave us some promises, and between the time of promise and manifestation, some of us messed up. But God still did it. Now the question now is, why? Why does God still bless if we err? Are y'all with me? It's important that we understand the answer to this question because you can imagine that the adversary would come and he'd really be working on it. You ain't getting it. You might as well go sit down somewhere. You messed up. You're not worthy. Well, we, can, we, we know we're not worthy. God ain't giving it to us because we were. But he'll try to put emphasis on the mess up. Why did God deliver the promise to Abram? And that's a great question, even though Abram messed up. Here's the answer. The promise wasn't about Abram. The promise was about the will, the purpose, and the plan of God. God, help me, help me convey this word. It was about the will, the purpose, and the plan of God. If you notice, 
there are a number of times, and I know that it, uh, how many times, but there are a number of times that you can reference in the Bible, 30 times that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is referenced in Scripture. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. In the Old Testament and the New Testament, 30 times you'll see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Now, do you think that our God was going to allow Abram's mess up to derail what he already had planned? Oh God, help me convey this. Abram's mess up was not strong enough to derail God's plan. Plus remember this, God's promise will always be greater than our pain. God's promise will always be greater than our failure. I, 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 know, I know some folk, uh, it, it's going to take some religious folk a moment to get this for it to sink in. Because you heard all your life that the only way you were going to get it is that you earned it. Let me help you out. You still haven't earned it. And I'm not in any way giving anybody a license to go out there and just mess up. That's not what I'm preaching. But I am preaching the fact that God will look beyond a fault and see a need. And if he has determined he's going to get glory through your life, he won't let your mess up mess him up. He will not allow my mess up. Mess up what he's determined he's going to work out in my life. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So God's plan is, tell somebody God's plan is greater. Say it again, God's plan is greater. Abram lied. Will God still work something in the life of a liar? God also knew but Abram's life was greater than the lie. The lie was for a moment. But God's word is forever. And his word minimized the lie. Oh, somebody really need to get this. His word minimized the lie because the word of God goes out of his mouth and it shall not return to him void. Now the adversary will say, well, God, you can't do it over at her house because she, now you know how she living. You know how she act up. She didn't pray like she should have prayed last week and, and, and she didn't do what she was supposed to do last week and you sure enough can't take that over to his house because he, he haven't read the scripture. He hadn't done that. You can't do it over God and God has said no my grace will be sufficient I'm going to pour some grace where failure would have been if you know what I'm talking about tell somebody God pour some grace at my house God pour some grace in my situation come on I had what I had because of the grace of God I got what I got because of the grace of God I stand today because of God's grace smile lift your hand and say grace grace got me here grace got it here grace got me this blessing that's why we can't be all, that's why we can't be arrogant looking down on somebody like we earned something and they didn't had it not been for the goodness of God, any of us could have been messed. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Somebody shout grace. Are you hearing me? So grace will make up the difference. And God determines things that will happen. Oh, God, help me. God determines things that will happen through our lives before we're formed in our mother's bellies. God determines the end from the beginning. God is, God is not today deciding what he's going to do through you tomorrow. It's already decided. The decision is already made. 
you might as well lift up your head, lift up your praise. It's already a done deal. I don't care how much the adversary trying to tell you it's not happening, it's not coming. No, God did that before the foundation. Y'all ain't helping me. Come on, he adopted you into this thing. Is anybody getting this in here? Is anybody getting this in here? Somebody say grace. Grace. And when we come to understand the grace of God, then we'll get more connected to him. We'll be more connected to him. We'll have this personal relationship with him. And God will be even that much more real. I could not imagine not having God in my life. I could not. I could not imagine. Some folk play with God like they playing with a tonka toy. I could not imagine. Not having God in my life. And let me tell you, I have good days and I have bad days. I have good days and bad days. I do thank God that my good days outweigh my bad days. And therefore, I won't complain. But I, I thought about, it's been a bunch of years ago now. But I thought about when I went over to China representing the city of Cincinnati as they were welcoming the world choir games. Nothing, number one, nothing is by coincidence, accident, or mistake. So I'm over in China. Pastor V was there with me. I'm over in China, and I'm singing with this uh, touring stage group from New York. They were a stage company from New York, and I was the single person selected for this particular number from Cincinnati. But what I'm reminded of is the song that we were given to sing. And the song that we sung was Whitney Houston's song, her gospel song. <laughs> Y'all started looking at me like, <gasps> But the song said, where do I go when there's nobody else to turn to? Who do I talk to when nobody wants to listen? Who do I lean on when there's no foundation stable? I go to the rock. I know he's able. <laughs> I go to the rock. And then we went on in the song to say, I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. When the earth all around me is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. That's why I'm glad I am settled in. I'm settled in this God I serve. Now, I don't know what the other folk are doing. I don't know where, where other people are going, but I go to the rock. Is there anybody else in here connected to the rock this morning? Come on, I'm getting ready to close this. Is there anybody else in here connected to the, I go to the rock. If you know what I'm talking about, tell somebody, tell them I go to the rock. getting ready to close, we, uh, we studied this thing and we were studying Abram's life and he told his wife, he told Sarah, you let them know, you're just telling you my sister because when we get over there, they're going to want you. And we had some real discussion Wednesday night. So y'all need to be in Bible class. I said, for, well, I didn't see it, but somebody in here said it. 
And maybe I did that. But we were saying, for Abram to be telling his wife that when we get there, you lie and tell them you my sister because they're going to want you. We said, Sister Sarai must have been a bad mama Jim. <laughs> Sister Carol must have been looking some kind of good. Are you with me? And as you study the scripture, we find out as they got there, they took her to the king. Took her to Pharaoh. And somebody in here in the class said, well, how old was she? Wasn't she a, uh, wasn't she a old, wasn't she? We be having some good Bible class. <laughs> wasn't she kind of old? What? So I told them, I said, we'll do some research and find out how old was she. And after doing some research, we found out that Sarah was about 66 years old. <laughs> 66. <laughs> All right, y'all, behave in here now. Yeah. <laughs> 66 and still had it going on there. She had it on and popping. I ain't stuck, y'all. She... Ah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> she was 66, had it on and popping. And, 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 and it really must have, it was, must have been so fabulous. Come on, y'all, don't get... You read the Bible. I'm coming straight out that Bible. 12th chapter of Genesis. The Bible said Pharaoh wanted her so bad, thought that Abram was her brother. He made Abram wealthy, gave him all kind of men servants, maid servants, gave him cattle, all kind of, gave him silver and gold. All he wanted was that woman. She must have had something going on. I'm in the Bible. But before, before uh, Pharaoh could touch her, God showed up and said, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> God showed, it's right there in the Bible, you read. God showed up and said, no, you don't. And, and God showed up in such a powerful way, in such a strong way, that Pharaoh knew it could have had to be God showing up. Abel, why did you lie to me? He said, why did you lie to me? Why did you lie? Why did you tell me this was your, this was your wife? You almost got me in trouble here. He said, look, take her, take everything, get him out of here. Give him the riches, get him out. And by the time you get out of the 12th chapter of Genesis into the 13th chapter of Genesis, it says, and Abram was rich in cattle, silver, and gold. Did y'all hear me? That Bible's something else. Amen? So Sarah, she must have been a fine sister. Ain't nothing wrong with her. Ain't nothing, nothing wrong with saying she must have been a fine sister. Sometimes you church folk get too deep for me. <laughs> she must have been a fine sister. And, and so now he's rich. And let me tell you something else about the heart of Abram. Because by the time you get to the 14th chapter of Genesis, the Bible said that Abram took tithe of all to the priest. See, if I had time to really work with this thing, God had blessed me, I'm going to bless God's house. I got to quit. We'll work with this some more when we really have some time. We will not have Bible study this Wednesday. But what I want to emphasize today is every time 
the adversary tries to tell you, not you, not now, it's not coming, it's not yours. You let him know that you understand who he is. He's still the liar he's always been. And God's not through blessing you. Give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise in here. Oh, come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. I need you to clap your hands for your sister. Clap your hands for your brother. The fact that God is not through blessing. Would you stand to your feet? Would you stand to your feet? God has been so good. God has been so, so, so good. Let us not take for granted the goodness of God. Let us not take for granted his goodness. Let us not take for granted when the Lord allows his peace to dwell in our families, in our homes, in our bodies. I had that event last night and I got home and finally got in bed and as soon as I got in bed, I got a phone call. It was a family in crisis. And uh, I hadn't been asleep all night. I said, God, I'm going to need some supernatural strength this morning. I didn't mind not sleeping because I was saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, I know you, and we curse in Jesus' name the enemy that's attacking this family. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. You've come to the wrong place at the wrong time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's nothing like, see, that's what I like about God, too. We can stand together and say, oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. If you see the adversary trying to mess with somebody else's home, you need to say, oh, no, you don't. No, no. No, you're not doing that. You, you're not getting in her house. Uh, you're not getting in this house. You're not going to mess with that. You're not going to mess with their children. Get off of that child. Get off of them. Get off of them. And so that's why I say I can boast in God. I'm proud of the God I know. I am humbled because I know him. The fact that he allowed me to know him in such a beautiful way. If you don't know him, you ought to get to know him. You ought to get to know him. You ought to get, I'm telling you, he's amazing. He's amazing. Anybody know he's amazing in here? If you know he's amazing, give him a wonderful praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's all about God. It's all about God. God knows your heart. He knows how we feel. He knows when we're feeling some kind of way. And he'll remind us, wait a minute, I'm still your rock. I'm still your rock. I still got you. I'm still holding you. There may be somebody in this house this morning that desires prayer. We pray for one another. Amen. If you're here this morning, come on, we'll pray for you. If you're watching electronically, we have somebody standing by to take your call. 513-851-WORD, 513-851-9673. We'll pray for you. Prayer changes things. Do I have any witnesses in the house? That no prayer changes the come on y'all. Anybody know it? Yes. 
Anybody know it? Anybody know it? Prayer changes things. Anybody else desire in prayer, come right now. Come right now. Come right now. Come on, that's right. Give them a hand as they come. Give them a hand as they come. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, yeah. That's right. Come on, yeah. He promised to keep Hallelujah. me, never to leave me, mm-hmm. never, never come short of his fast and pray. I've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way. Yeah. Keep my life clean every day. Hallelujah, come on. I want to go with him when he comes back. Oh. coming. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. God is God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery and strife. Yeah, yeah. He promise to keep me, uh-huh. never to leave Yeah. Me. Never, never comes short of Gotta fast and pray. Fast and pray. Stay in the narrow way. Keep my life clean every day. I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far and I'll never turn back. Got it. Listen, listen. Somebody might be here that would say, you know, I know I heard the word of God in this place. I know I need to be planted so that I can be in fellowship with this body of believers. Praying together, standing together, studying together, doing the works of Jesus. They're coming by the thousand. You ought to be one of those that are coming today. There's greeters over to my left ready to welcome you to Word of Deliverance Ministry. Ministers in front of me praying. You still have time to come for prayer. Come on, right in front of me. Membership, discipleship over to my left. But come on, God is.
cannot operate like we just another business in the city we got to operate like we prayer warriors seeking God praying in good times and bad times praying in come on in good days and bad days praying when we see the light and praying in darkness praying like we got experience and we know what prayer will do some of us have prayed before and we've seen God work things out before We've seen God bring us out before. We've seen God heal us before. I've seen God do it. Don't try to shut me down now. I got to pray for somebody that don't know what to do. Jesus. We got to do. We got to do like we got experience. We got to do like we heard a war cry. Ought to be some church folk here to walk right. It's time for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to hear a walk right. It's time to pray now. It's time to declare that we need the power of God to move in the land. If nobody can heal, my God can heal. I've seen God do it. Let me tell you something. Don't you stop praying now. There's a name, there's a name, there's a name, there's a name that is above every name. I God, my God, the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall I dare you to shout, Jesus.